Hey, what's up, guys? So, just watched the Warriors Mavs game. That was a really fun game. I'm going to talk about a few things from there and some of my takeaways for these teams. But the biggest thing I want to talk about um, is my impression of Andrew Wiggins from that game. And I'm going to talk about why. The primarily in the in the video, I'm going to talk about why I think the Warriors fleece the Timberwolves in the Wiggins trade. I'll get into the details of that. But first, let's uh, go into the game itself. That was a really fun game. It was I, I really enjoyed watching uh, Steph and Luca going at it. They both hit a ton of insane shots. They were both really hot. I think Steph ended up with 57 points, and Luca finished with uh, 41, I believe. I have to go back and double check exactly. But it was really fun to watch. Um, and it, I think, especially with Steph Curry, it, that just goes to show. And I, I mentioned this in one of my other videos for fantasy basketball. Steph Curry is a cheat code that I would I always try to prioritize getting him in the first round because he's not necessarily drafted first, but he's going to lock up your three pointers because he's going to have games like these today where he hits eleven, um, and that's going to that itself is going to give you a, a that's itself is going to get you win that week with having a game like that. In, in terms of that category. And then you've also got, he's going to give you a lot of points, especially the situation of the team where he's basically the go-to scorer, um, he's scoring almost a, a third of the team's points in, in games like that. Um, free throw percentage, always going to be really high. Field goal percentage, always going to be really high. And he's had some triple-double or games where he's been flirting with a triple double as well. So he really gives you so much value in fantasy basketball. And he's a guy that, again, as I talk about in the, in the concept of scarcity, there's not a lot of point guards that put up the type, type of production that he does in fantasy basketball. So he's a guy that I always try to get in the first round if he's available, depending on where I'm drafting exactly. But yeah, and I think that still holds true with this season as well. So Steph Curry, a guy that, you always can rely on in fantasy basketball. So real quick, I'm going to talk about the Mavs and their side of that game. I think Dallas will be fine. Um, this game showed me that I, I really wasn't too worried about their slump anyway because I think that a lot of their issues were that their team hasn't had a whole lot of time together to really mesh because they had a lot of issues with COVID. They didn't have the whole team and healthy. And uh, Maxi Kleba, who hit a big three in that game, um, he really provides a lot to the team. He's a, a solid defensive presence. He didn't necessarily play great defense today, but he can hit shots. He um, he he's a good big to switch on to guards, and you're if you're in a pick and roll situation. So he really they really missed him a lot during their losing streak, and he's starting to find his form again. Um, but Dallas really needs to address their three point shooting and their defense which they address the defense portion, but I think Josh Richardson is not the answer. And I think that Rick Carlisle realized that. He didn't play him very much in the fourth quarter. Um, but I think they'll probably need to see if they could find another three-point shooter on the trade market. I'm not really sure who – maybe like Wayne Ellington could be available. But some something uh, – I would get some a role player – I wouldn't trade for Bradley Beal like people are suggesting that they should try to do because they have a solid core. They just need to add consistency to it. Um, I don't think that's the move that they want to make at this time, especially since they're going to have some cap space to um, do some things this offseason potentially. So let's talk about Andrew Wiggins. So Andrew Wiggins in that game – so this was his number line. He had 22 points on 75% shooting. He was 9 of 12 from the field. He had he was 3 of 5 from three-point range. He had five rebounds and one assist. So second-leading scorer on the Warriors. Um, but what I really like is that Wiggins is, is seems a lot more he's, – he's, I haven't seen him play that efficiently ever before. Um, he's got a, he had a nice, uh, post move where he would back somebody up and then he would do a, a, a fade away, uh, spin. Like when he's backed, backed up on the baseline, that was a pretty effective play. I thought, so he's added that to his game. 
Um, he moves really well without the ball. He's a pretty good fit on this team. I really liked this trade at the time because I felt that he could... They're, you're, they're not asking for him to be a superstar. They're asking him to essentially be the third option at, uh, on the team offensively. I, I don't think Draymond is necessarily in that role anymore. Um, but ideally, when this team is healthy, you'll have Steph and Clay. Uh, 1A, 1B, and then you can have Wiggins come in, and he kind of fills that role of kind of like Harrison Barnes back in the original Warriors cast before KD got there. And if Wiggins could do that, he could be a productive value for them. And he's he's proven that he could do that, and he had a pretty good game today. Maybe I would have liked him to take a little more shots than he did, especially since they were uh, shorthanded. But I think he's he's pretty he's proven that in that aspect of the deal, the Warriors have done well in taking a shot on him and giving him a chance to thrive that system. Um, so when Clay gets back, I think you're especially it's going to take the pressure off of Wiggins to do even more um, because he's not going to have that extra tension. Um, he, he, he's not going to have he's not going to have as much attention even now because now you have two great shooters surrounding him, so I'll have more space to kind of um, help uh, create his own plays even more. So I think it's I think it's a great move for them. But then you look at the whole package of the trade and the draft pick, and then it's 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 proven that the Warriors fleece the Timberwolves with this. So let's take a look at it. If quick recap of that trade, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Get, uh, got D'Angelo Russell from the Warriors. Um, and then the Warriors got back Wiggins, a 2021 uh, draft pick that was top three protected. And then a 2021 second round pick. So they're giving away both their first their uh, draft picks for, for this, this draft, which is projected to be a pretty good draft. Um, but let's talk about D'Angelo Russell, because D'Angelo Russell was not a great fit on the Warriors because he struggled to play off the ball. He's also not a great defender, um, and that hurt the Warriors because they, at that time, they really needed defense because Clay was out, uh, Livingston retired, um, Iggy was traded. So they, and, and they've started to get better at defense now, but even in tonight's game, you kind of saw that wasn't great. But Wiggins is a better defender than Russell is. And you look at how Minnesota's doing now, and, and Russell is – his lack of defense has hurt this team and they're the worst team in the West. They're literally the only team in the West that I think you can definitively say is out of the playoff race at this point. And considering we're only 20 games into the season about that's pretty bad. So that's really not panned out well for the Timberwolves. Um, and then you look at the draft picks. So Minnesota is currently the number, the, the second worst team in the, in the NBA. So they have um, the second highest odds to get the number one pick, but well, actually not even. So they're so they're the second second worst team in the NBA, but their odds to get the number one pick are the same as the top three, uh, the, or the bottom three teams. They're all uh, it has the most ping pong balls in the lottery. So they have a fourteen percent chance that, that pick is number one. And keep in mind, this is top three protected. So anything outside of top three will go to the Warriors. But the way that the lottery system has now distributed the odds out so that other teams can, um, so it discourages tanking. What is, what's happened is that for the Timberwolves pick, they have a higher percentage that that, that pick is going to go to the Warriors than they do that that pick is going to stay with them. So 14%... Chance that it's the number one overall pick, 13.4% chance that it's the number two overall pick, 12.7% chance it's the number three overall pick. That's a total of 40.1%. So it's basically 40% chance that it stays with the Timberwolves, even if they completely bottom out as the worst team in the league, because that's the same odds as the as the number the second worst team is the worst team. So 40% chance that they that they keep the pick and 60% chance the Warriors get it. So the Timberwolves not only are the bottom team in the West, but there's a higher odds right now that they're going to lose that pick than they are actually going to draft anybody with that. Plus Anthony Edwards isn't looking great either. 
Um, especially compared to some of the other guys drafted after him, like LaMelo Ball and Tyrese Halberton. Um, so th- things are pretty bleak in Minnesota, and this trade definitely did not help them. And you could pretty much say at this point, unless Minnesota strikes gold and gets the number one overall pick, that even with that aside, this trade has proven to pretty much be a massive L for the Timberwolves. So... Bob Myers, very underrated GM. This is this looks like another example where he pulled off a great move that I think is going to help the Warriors long term. Meanwhile, Minnesota looks like they're going to continue to be in the cellar and probably lose Carl Anthony Towns eventually. So, all right. Well, that's all I got for this video. But if you like stuff like this, please let me know. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. All right. See you guys.